Hi there, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, this happened. And, you know, you're welcome to judge me in the comments because I'm certainly judging myself. Remember, remember the whole series of videos that I did at the end of 2023 and into the beginning of 2024 and I, you know, I said I was going to make a real effort to use what I had and, and, you know, be more mindful about my purchasing. Then I hurt my back and I, I'm not, I'm not a very good, um, injured patient. <laughs> I, I, <clears throat> I get very frustrated with myself, particularly since I did it to myself. And when I get frustrated, of course, I want to sit and color, but I couldn't because my back meant that I couldn't sit for very long. Um, I tried, you know, sitting in different chairs. It just wouldn't until I could, you know, get some adjustments done and build the strength up and etc. So of course, what does Connie do when she's stressed, but she can't color? She stress shops. Some of this was, so this is from like end of December into what are we almost middle of February. So, it's going to look like a lot of stuff, but it, I don't know. I'm trying to justify it to myself now. It is spread over you know, um, like a month and a half. Um, some of this was actually ordered in December, but I didn't get it till the beginning of January. So that's kind of what I have in front of me here. And I'll try and give you my reasoning for some of the stuff that I was buying. Some of it, I quite frankly don't have any um, stress. But I don't know, I just, I thought I would show you what I bought. Some of it's kind of unique stuff. Some of it I'm sure you've seen before. Maybe it can give you some ideas. Uh, yeah, uh, quite a lot of it is replacement stuff. I was just getting the feeling that everything just seems to be getting so much more expensive so quickly. I don't know. Again, trying to justify this to myself, but let's take a look anyway. So there's some supplies here and some books. I bought the 12 pack of the Artex acrylic markers. Sorry, it's kind of a shine there. And these are these kind of acrylic markers. And I don't know if you remember back in December, I, don't know, I was on a kick and I was buying a lot of them. Well, okay, this is it. This is the last. So they're metallic. There's 12 of them. Of course they have that, that brush tip, All right? See that? Are they any different than ones I already had? Not really. So why did I buy them? I don't know, but I did. Just I just grabbed two of them here. Uh, the rest are in the wooden acrylic pen racks that I have. Uh, I think I had a previous video where I talked about those. It's a it's a laser cut pattern you can buy off Etsy, and then you just need somebody who's got laser cutting, and it cuts it out of wood, and you put them together, etc. But that's where the rest of them are. But I just thought I would save the box just to, to show you. I have them swatched starting. So these first four here are actually these old Ohuhu metallic pens that I've had. And there's more of them. There was actually 24 of these metallic colors. Honestly, I should have just stuck with these. I thought maybe these, the 12 Artex ones would give me new colors. But I mean, you can see that. So starting there, one through 24, that's these Ohuhu metallics. And then where it says JP1, and then these 12, that's the Artex metallic um, pens. I don't know that there's honestly any colors in the Artex that weren't in the Ohuhu. And I kind of like the color payout of the Ohuhu better. Um, the Artex all seem to have kind of a silvery shine. I don't know, maybe the Ohuhu do as well. My point is, I probably didn't need the Artex. These would have been just fine, but I did purchase them. Are they, are they, I mean, they're okay. They're, they're certainly not, you know, bad. And if you didn't have any other metallic acrylic, they go on really nice and smoothly. Yeah. I purchased the Crayola and they're, they're not actually not in here anymore. It's a cool tin though, isn't it? Sorry, lots of shine there. This is the Crayola tin looks like. Signature pearlescent cream sticks. So they're gel crayons and they're pearlescent. There was 10 of them in this tin. 
I think I got them when they were on sale. Just because sometimes these Crayola signature products can be kind of pricey. Um, but I think I got these on a sale. And I really wanted them for the black one. So I took them out of the tin. I didn't really have room for the tin. I just have them uh, elastic banded together. But I really wanted it for the black one because I don't have a black pearlescent gel crayon. Um, I have the King Art Metallics and they have black in there, but it's it's not, it's, it's silver. And I was hoping this would be more black. I think this is more black than that one, but it's still silvery. Um, and then it's got some you know, interesting colors. There's a white pearl in there, but yeah. So that's the, the Crayola signature gel crayons, the pearlescent ones. I did get, so I think this was in maybe one of the um, haul videos that I had there at the end of 2023. The only pencil extenders I had, I had a, a cheap one that came with, it was like some set, some Prismacolor something, and it's fantastic. Can't find those kind though. So I had uh, purchased these Derwent ones. They're not good. They're, they're really cheap. Um, they have a, a kind of a screw top to, to snug the pencil in there. It was two different sizes, which is something I was looking for, but I don't know, the metal on metal, it, it's just, they're really not good. And I think it might have been Jody, J.I. Colorist, had found these on Amazon. And it's a pack of, and honestly, I think, I think there's eight in this pack. It was cheaper than the two Durant. Um, it's a pack of pencil extenders. And they're different colors. And they're very similar to the Durant, but they actually feel like they're made better. Um, when you go to unscrew the, the lid, it's not a horrible kind of grady metal on metal feeling. And there are six, I believe, in this size, which is sort of a standard size pencil. And then there are two that look like this, and they're actually double-ended. One end is the same kind of standard size, if you can see that. But the other end is larger, so it's for bigger pencils. And... They, they, they feel heavier. They actually, now maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe Derwent made theirs really light for a reason because you don't want the added weight, you know, when you've got a pencil. Um, but yeah, these seem really nice. Like they, they unscrew really nicely. You know, they're, uh, they don't catch. So yeah, just a little pack of pencil extenders because ugh, there's going to be a lot in this haul. Um, I'm not going to link things down below but if there's anything in the haul where you would like a link just let me know and I can certainly put that in the comments so if you just leave me a comment I can do that so yeah it's eight piece pencil extender two of these longer ones that are double-ended and then six that are just the the normal pretty kind of pastel colors so that was to replace those Derwent ones which I just don't like they're just not good I also bought another pack of um, I had one pack of these before, I think that were all black and they're the, I think they're makeup brushes, right? But I use them for blending out the, the gel crayons and the gel crayon doesn't wash out of them very well. It just kind of gets sticky and gets stuck in there. So I just got a, another pack to have uh, some clean ones there, just particularly for doing light colors. And I know I, c I probably should have some, you know, I should have one that's specifically for yellows and one that's specifically for oranges and then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Maybe I'll do that. So this is, there's what, 12 in there, I think. So, and they were, they're not the prettiest color handles, but I didn't really care. And then I got some books. So if you remember back last year, I was, I was looking for um, Hannah Carlson's Winter Dreams postcard book and I had purchased one on eBay because they're not in print anymore and it was missing a card and the seller was fantastic I contacted them right away they they refunded me the whole amount um and just told me to keep the book but then one of my viewers pointed out that there was I think this is the Dutch version on Amazon UK um 
I, and I don't even think it was a third party seller. I think it was just Amazon UK selling it. So I did pick that up and this is a complete book. So it has all 20 cards. I won't do flip throughs of these because these are old. I'm sure you guys have seen them. If anyone does want to flip through, just let me know. But yeah, I do like, I'm, I'm not a huge Hannah Carlson fan, but I really love her winter pictures. I don't know why. She, she does live in Sweden. And of course they, they do get cold weather there. Maybe she just really understands winter, <laughs> but yeah. So I picked that up. Uh, and then while I was ordering from Amazon UK anyway, I grabbed these books as well. So again, these are, these are winter sort of themed books. I don't think these are in print anymore. They're from paper and cloth studio. I don't know if it says who the artist is. Uh, it's a Hachette UK company. Publisher Willie Allen. Art director Julie Weir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Illustrations by Rebecca Barker. And this is Midwinter Magic. And I just, it's its sort of a Hannah or um, a Joanna Basford sort of sized book, I think. Not like small victories, but a, you know, sort of a standard size book. Um, and it just has very wintry, but kind of zen doodly, lots of tiny details, images, and the, the paper is good. You know, it's, it's very similar to that, um, Joanna Basford, you know, kind of paper. It's very smooth, which I like, but yeah, just kind of wintry images. I really like coloring wintry images, which sounds funny because you'd think, well, it's you know, a lot of snow, but you can do a lot with snow. And then this is also Paper and Cloth Studios. And I don't know if this is the same. This one actually doesn't have an artist listed. It just says Paper and Cloth Studios. Oh team of four hugely talented designers in-house, Carly, Louise, Beck, and Gemma. So this is kind of neat. Let's see that. So cover folds over, but it continues the image. And kind of fairly simil similar to the last one. Um, very detailed kind of Zen doodly winter images. If I'm going to be honest, I think I prefer the other one to this one. Yeah, I think I do. I think I like the Midwinter Magic one better. But those also came from Amazon UK. And I th think... No, this one did not. I think it was just those three that came from Amazon UK. These two... Well, actually, we'll do this one next. This one came from Etsy. Probably Chill and Sarah, I think. So this is the newest one in sort of that Yururi Mouse sketchbook kind of series. So we've got the, the squirrel, this looks like Yururi, um, and this is seasonal wreaths of plants and friends. And yeah, there's been a few flip throughs of this already. It goes by season. So there's autumn, there's winter in the back. The ink work is, is sepia. It's not black, but just very, there's summer, spring, Easter, very cute. It's got some images in the front there. You can get a PDF of the book. I've never managed to figure out how to do that. I probably, or maybe it's just one image. I'm not sure. Um, trying to figure that out at some point. And it, it's quite a, like quite a lot of these. Oh, sorry. You probably can't see the other side. Um, a lot of the, the Korean or Japanese books, it has some, some sort of coloring tips in the front. Baronese Mountain Dog. I would love to have some of those. Remind me of my Great Pyrenees that we said goodbye to a couple of years ago, but that's very nice coloring samples there in the front. That's beautiful. Yeah. So this was um, from Etsy. These two and the stencils were all, nope, sorry. These two books and one stencil were from Amazon Canada. This is Mary Tanana's Christmas to Color. 
Again, these were all sort of end of December purchases that didn't get delivered until January. December was very stressful for me. I did a lot of buying. Yeah. And then January was supposed to be enough is enough, Connie. And then uh, you'll see what happened. But I do like these kinds of images. So this is Christmas to Color, Mary to Nana. I think this is maybe only my second Hannah Carlson. Maybe my third. I don't have them all. This is Daydreams. And it, it of all of them, I think this one maybe even appeals to me more than I have. What do I have? I have Seasons. And that's it, maybe? No, Seasons and then the Witch one. Tales from the Witch's Cottage. I don't have any others. Um, I do like her artwork. It intimidates me. And I'm not a fan of coloring people. So I'm, I'm not likely to color pages that have portraits. But this one didn't seem to have a lot of portraits. I don't mind coloring animals. And I don't mind coloring people if it's just sort of, you know, a small part of the page. But the, the pages where... Um, yeah, like these two pages, I probably would not color. But I know I've said in past I should maybe get over that and and just, you know, get in there and, and learn how to color skin. Um, we'll see. But I'm sure everyone has seen that. That's Hannah Carlson's Daydreams. And this is the stencil that I was that I got from Amazon, and I was using it to do the um, the backgrounds or part of the background in those snowflake mandalas that I was showing in my January completed pages. So yeah, it, it just, it's a 12 by 12 stencil, which is great for, for larger books. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it off of Amazon. I then wanted some more 12 by 12 stencils, but they can be kind of pricey on Amazon depending on the company. So I went straight to the crafters workshop. And they actually have a website and I got some 12 by 12 stencils from them. This is where I think my spending started to go off the rails. And then I tried to rein it in. Then I got, then I injured my back and I, uh, sorry, I know I keep saying it. I keep apologizing. I, I, I should stop. So these two stencils are kind of, well, they're one's a negative of the other, right? So if you want to stencil so that you're stenciling um, the color into the tree portion and not the background, you would use this one. You can put this one down and then the where the tree is will stay uncolored and the background will be colored. So it's one's a negative to the other. So I thought that was that was neat. This is a, a gorgeous kind of forest stencil. Sorry glare in the packaging there um i really liked that one and again for backgrounds right having you know images in the background that aren't really fussy i did like this one for sort of spring and summer there's more going on in this particular stencil but hopefully you know that would be not too much going on in the background particularly if it was all kind of monocolor one color Do you like the galaxy background? I need to try and work this into some pages. It's more color, the, the galaxy uh, backgrounds that I've seen people do, they're definitely more colorful than I would normally do, but I, I would like to experiment with that. So there's galaxy stencil. And then this one, just kind of a very pretty kind of spring, almost cherry blossom kind of stencil. So this was sort of, this was end of December, beginning of January. Um, considered purchases, I think, for the most part. And then, then I hurt my back. And I was very stressed. And when I get stressed, I shop. And I also feel like I need to, to weirdly enough, hoard. I don't know why. I, I, I probably should unpack the, the psychology behind that, but here. 
I did this. I do have a full set of the Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. And as I was starting, kind of end of December, beginning of January, I started on a, a swatching project, a fairly large one. And I, I was doing it for a number of reasons. One of the things I discovered, though, was as I was going through, I could figure out what was dried out, what was, you know. And there were a number of the Spectrum Noir markers that I had that were dried out. Now, Spectrum Noir offers, or offered, refills for their alcohol markers. And I went online to see if I could get refills. I discovered that I'm pretty sure they have discontinued these now, which is really unfortunate because they were a good quality marker. Um, they had replaceable nibs. They had refills. And you had the blending families. I, I like them. I mean, I think my Windsor Newton markers are still my favorite, but I really like the Spectrum Noir too. So I purchased a bunch of refills for the colors that I tend to use the most, even the ones that weren't necessarily dry, because from what I could see, I think they've discontinued these. So if, if I'm wrong on that, please let me know. They're just sitting right now in a, it's one of those disposable lasagna trays <laughs> until I figure out where I'm going to put them. But um, yeah, so I don't know if you call that hoarding or not, but I just, yeah, I don't think they're, they're making them anymore. Get those. And I, I mean, I could show you all the colors here, but they just, they all look pretty much the same. They used to come as one unit where the pipette was actually in the lid of the bottle, but they changed their design because I think they were getting a lot of leakage out of the top of that. So now you get the bottle with a screw cap and then the pipette is, um, it's not meant to stay in the bottle. You would just use the pipette to refill your markers and then, so which means you kind of have to keep these little boxes like this because I don't know how else you would store the, uh, the bottle with the pipette and you kind of want to keep them, you know, together because the, the, you know, the pipette's going to have ink of that color in it. So it's kind of a pain, but yeah. So I got a lot of the blue grays, the green grays, some of the coral colors, um, I think there's some tan colors in here. So, yeah, got those. I think I got those from Dick Blick. If you look on their website, there's actually not a lot um, of colors there. Certainly not all of them. I also grabbed this from Dick Blick. This is a refill or a backup set as well. This is the King Art... Um, gel crayons, but just the metallic colors. And you can't get this on Amazon. You can get the King Art, but they, they only come in a big, it's like a four pack. And I tend to use the metallic colors more than any others. And so, yeah, I got a, a backup pack of the metallic. Again, this is when I'm stressed, I, it's a control thing, right? I, I think I just need or want to make sure I don't run out of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, what else did I get? Got these two things from Dick Blick. These were the Liquitex Basics Acrylic. This is matte gel medium and gloss heavy gel medium. Wanted to try these for like sealing pages. Um, yeah, putting over top of backgrounds, maybe even mixing in with some other things to try and create maybe new background mediums. So that's those. Did I need any of this stuff? No. But I got it. So that was also Dick Blick. Um, oh. I grabbed these. They are from Imagine, which is... They're actually made in Japan. I thought maybe they were Sunanko Inc. The same company? Maybe not. But they are... They're like ink paintbrushes, sort of. They are um, just kind of a like a foam uh, cylinder that's been, in this case, sharpened to a point, and it's wrapped in plastic, and it has its own little cap. They also had some that were bullet tip, and what you do with these is you soak up ink 
on the tip and then you can color with the ink. Now, yes, I could have done that with a paintbrush too, but these were, they weren't that expensive. So I thought I would give them a try. Um, I think there's six in each pack. So six bullet tips, six brush tip. Got those. I think that might've been it. Looking here from Dick Blick. Now, yeah. I have been wanting to try Distress Oxide inks for a while. And particularly when I started doing, oh, sorry, light there. Particularly when I started doing um, backgrounds, those, those gel crayon backgrounds, because I think that Distress Oxide ink will blend better on most of the pages of that we see in our coloring books than regular Distress ink. And the Distress ink line has now been finished. And by finished, I don't mean discontinued. I mean, there's not going to be any more colors added to it. And I had started collecting the small mini inks, not the, and these aren't oxide, these are just distress. I'd started collecting the small mini inks, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And so I don't have any of the larger ink pads for just the regular ink. I just have the minis, but I do have now all of the minis. And so the last four minis just came out, I think in January. And so they were uh, these colors. When I buy the mini pads, I also buy the reinkers, just because the mini pads tend to run out. And you can do a lot of things with these reinkers too. You can drip them into uh, like a palette and paint with them. You can um, do backgrounds with them that way, or you can just uh, do backgrounds using the ink pads and blending brushes. But the, the last four colors were Uncharted Mariner, Lost Shadow, Lumberjack Plaid, and Scorched Timber. So I got the, the four mini pads for these and then four reinkers. I don't buy any of the other things. I know every time Tim Holtz came out with a new color, um, you could also get, oh, I think there was like uh, watercolor pencils, um, the, the gel sticks. I, I don't tend to get any of those. I just had the inks and the, the re-anchors. But I decided I would try some of the Distress Oxides. Now, these only come in the larger ink pads. Distress Oxide don't come in the, the smaller ones. So that size. I also got these storage tins. You can see the colors that I have here. I don't have them all. Um, some of the kind of yellows and peachy colors, um, then some of the blues and greens. And then over here, we've got a few of the kind of vintagey colors, some more of the blues, some of the, the grays and browns, and then the white. Also, got this. I know this is getting ridiculous. I don't even have places to put this stuff anymore on my desk. I also got reinkers for the distress oxide. So this is a little tin Tim Holtz makes. I actually got, I think I have 26 distress oxides or 28 and uh, this must be 26 because there's 24 in here. If it's 24, I was not buying a whole new container just for these two extra. They can just sit on top. But, yeah, they sit in here nicely. So, there we go. That too. Um, I also picked up from Amazon. With those ink pads, I like to... The, the larger blending brushes are good, but sometimes the smaller size of these ones is handy. And I, what I do is I label these 
so that each ink pad has its own little brush. And these come in packs of two, I think. They are it's this tube. And there's eight of these little fingertip blending brushes in there. And they stack, which is nice because it, it gives you, uh, it, it's kind of space saving. And I just get those, I have a whole bunch of those one inch um, Avery labels, like office labels. So I write on it, stick it on there, put a piece of clear tape around it to hold it on. And then every one of these is labeled to go with one of the oxide ink colors. There's a cap that goes on the very top one. You gotta be a little bit careful to, when you're putting them back together so you don't kind of squish the bristles, but. So those go along with my Distress inks. They didn't come with them, I bought those from Amazon. Um, I did get at the same time, uh, the only Distress crayons I have are the pearlescent um, holiday sets. So this is two of the sets from this past year. I didn't get them all. So this is, I think this is one of the Christmas sets, Frosty Mint Wonderland, Sugar Gumdrop. And then this is one of the Halloween sets, Fallen Acorn, Mulled Cider, and Unraveled. Those will go in my little tin with the rest of my um, pearlescent distress crayons. Again, just nice, nice colors for backgrounds. I know I've thrown away the packaging for this already. Sorry, they would have come in. Oh, and I did get this one as a backup. I do have this set, but I use this, um, I think it is called, it's a blue winter frost. I use that a lot for backgrounds. So because Tim Holtz doesn't sell these pearlescent ones, um, open stock. So I had to get a, a set to get a replacement for that. So those as well. No. Nope. All right, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> a lot of this is backups, but not all of it. So I did get a backup pack of three of the Spectre Noir Sparkle. It's the clear overlay. I like the clear Spectre Noir better than the clear Wink of Stella. The clear wink of Stella, the, the mica that's in it is almost silvery, whereas the mica that's in the Spectrum Noir clear ones is truly clear. So when you put it on top of, you know, snow and that sort of things, that snow, basically, it, it looks like snow. It doesn't look like you've put silver on top, if that makes sense. So I did pick up a, a three-piece uh, backup of that. This is some Posca um, backups. These are the black brush ones. So I don't know if you guys have seen these. They look like, that's one one. This. So it's a Posca pen, but it's got a brush nib and it's actually bristles. And I find these work better for black acrylic back, back black acrylic backgrounds. That's hard to say because it, they're not as streaky, right? Cause you've got an actual brush. And I think this was Amazon. There was a pack of five of these and it was a kind of a deal. So I grabbed that game backups. Um, these are some wink of Stella black that I grabbed probably a lot of the the craft stuff that I got, you know, the, the distress oxides, they, it was from Simon says stamp. And so is that where these were from as well? I think so, but these are actually black wick of Stella. And I wanted to try these for some backgrounds too. Um, just, just to try. So it's, 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 yeah, it's black ink. I grabbed some diamond stickles backups those. Um, these are some glaze 
Jelly Roll pens, just the clear. I actually prefer the clear to the black. I know a lot of people use the black, but the clear can go over anything, right? So you can put these over, you can put an, you know, a black pencil. Um, you could color something black with pencil or with marker, put these over top, and then it's still going to be shiny. So the black one is neat, but I find these more useful. So there's five of them there. For my snowflake mandalas, I've been doing a lot of coloring with these white Signo, Uniball Signo the Broad, and straight up coloring with them. So you tend to go through them kind of quickly. So I got five of those as well. Those are backups. Um, I got some backup five. I know. And you, I, why am I buying five of things? I don't know. It is. It does, particularly where I live, shipping can be expensive, and it takes a long time to get things. And I know, um, you know, part of the whole Kanmari thing was stored at the store, but stores are not close to me at all. And even with shipping, it takes a long, long time to get things. And again, it's, I think it was part of my frustration and stress. I was feeling anxious and frustrated. And so when I get anxious, I just, I want all the things and I want to have them here. So I, I have them when I need them. I don't know. Can, can any of you relate to that? It seems silly now that I'm saying it out loud, but so these are the plastic nib micron. I use these for labeling and writing on, you know, all kinds of things. So I got those. Um, I got some more Derwent, uh, blender pens. So these are the, one of the two blender pens that I would suggest, the other one being the Holbein blender pen for blending, you know, colored pencils, crayons, not the water soluble crayons, but irregular crayons. Um, I like these the best. So I got some backups of those backups of my favorite. If I had a favorite pit pen, I think it would be the white. <laughs> so this is a white brush. I use this all the time on top of everything for, oh gosh, highlights for lightning areas for, because it's opaque, but it's not super opaque. It's not like a gel pen. So yeah, I should try and do some more videos showing all the different ways I use this white. So I wanted some backups for those. Um, these are two of the Derwent Red, the Christmas coloring. I went through quite a lot of, of these. So this is, um, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter talked about this, which is one of the reasons why I include the Derwent Red in my Polychromos Plus case, because a lot of sets of colored pencils just simply don't have a, a neutral red. They either lean orange or they lean pink or purple. This Derwent Red from the Lightfast range is a truly neutral red. So it's a great, great pencil. Yellow ochre. I had this is a Durant drawing pencil. Um, I had a set of Durant drawing, and my yellow ochre was breaking all the time. Every time I went to sharpen it, so it, this is just kind of a replacement for that. I didn't contact Durant. I just when I was ordering from, I think some of this stuff came from Delta Art, which is a, a art supply company here in Canada. Um, I just threw a, a yellow ochre in there as well. I did grab the two new Prismacolor colors. I know this is ages later, but so there's orchid and amethyst. Um, oh, there's another Durant red. So I got three Durant reds. Put this up to the side. This also, I think I got from Delta art. Um, it's called the incredible nib. It's this odd, it's like a fibery, it almost feels like fiberglass, but I, I don't think it is. <laughs> Maybe it is, I don't know. But you can use it apparently to put masking fluid onto really fine areas, which I thought, that's interesting. It's not bristly, like it's, yeah, it says for silk fabrics, wooden clay. But I did when I was shopping on Delta Art, I thought I would try, I, I had an old container of PBO drawing gum and it was, it had gotten like solid. So I 
threw that away. I got a new one. So this is nice and liquidy inside. But I thought I would also try the, the PH, Dr. PH Martin's Frisket uh, liquid. It's not blue, so it's going to be harder to see. But I just thought I would try it. I haven't tried it yet, just to see if it was any better. And I thought this might be useful with one of these. I do have in here, because I also grabbed two extra of these masking fluid pens. I do like using the pens, but there's sometimes when you want, yeah, it, it, it's not always, it's not always ideal. So sometimes you want the, the liquid in the bottle. I don't know, it's just different masking fluids and what have you, I thought I would try. And yeah, that's gonna go over there. From the Faber-Castell online store, I love these Pit Artist Pens Big Brush pens. They don't make them anymore. I wish they did. I know they have a new one where it's dual ended, which is good, but they don't have the color range that they had with these big brush um, pens. I don't have all of these. There's a few colors I wish I did have, but one of the colors that come in the, that did come in these big brush pens that doesn't come in the small pit pens, which I color with all the time, or the new dual ended ones is this chrome oxide green 278. I love this color. And of course you guys know I color with pit pens all the time. This is a fantastic color for um, particularly evergreens. And so I was on the, the um, Faber Castell online store and I noticed they still had some of these and they were pretty cheap because I mean they're, they're selling them off, right? I grabbed four of them. They don't tend to dry out. I've never ever had a pit artist pen dry out on me. So I thought, well, I'm probably safe if I have, you know, some backups here. But yeah, I, I love this color. It's not made anymore. Why Faber-Castell still has these for sale, I don't know, but they did. So I grabbed four of these. I also grabbed some open stock uh, gelatos. The only place that I know of that sells open stock gelatos is the Faber-Castell store, online store. And so these are the colors that I was using a lot of doing those backgrounds, those winter sunset backgrounds. So I grabbed two of each. So there's satellite, black hole, and coral. So grab those. So you can see a lot of this stuff is backups. Do I need this many backups? Sorry, it's really loud. Hang on. Sorry, that was my printer too. Why well, it's making noises, I don't know. Oh, I think this was, oh, this was the frisket something. This was just some, some uh, instructions. Do I need this many backups? No, I really do not. But like I say, I, it's stress. I don't know, I, I, when I get stressed, I feel like I need to control. I need to, I don't know. So on the Faber-Castell store, I also got a pack of their new alcohol markers. I just wanted to try them and I got the, I think this is the fashion pack, vintage rose. So these are colors that you don't often see um, in the other Faber-Castell lines. So vintage rose, dusty mauve, lavender light, vintage turquoise, uh, light yellow ochre, and sand. They look very, very similar to the water-based Faber-Castell gold Faber markers, but these are alcohol. This is just the little insert that came with. Um, I mean, that's the whole color range there. I think there are 60 colors. I just have these six, but I just wanted them to play with. This is long. You know what? Hang on, guys. I'm going to take a break because this has now been 45 minutes and my back needs a break. So it'll just be a second for you guys, but uh, I'm going to take a little break here. Okay, I am back. Um, just, well, one more big thing to show. But I did forget to show this. Uh, I did get some of the Deco Brush pigment pens from Karen Openstock. I think I also got these from Simon Says Stamp. 
just I wanted to see because I love coloring with my pit pens so much and they are pigment pens I wanted to try these uh Karen deco brush and well I'll show them to you here so of course you guys have probably heard me mention before if I'm wanting to try a new supply and it's available open stock I will always buy greens because <laughs> that's I tend to color a lot of uh, landscapes foliage so I got some of their greens so these are the uh the colors swatched out a few earth tones here as well so uh all black ochre cinnamon sandstone warm gray one I don't know what I think of them I like the colors um they're more opaque I think than the pit pens the pit pens other than the white are very much transparent whereas these these almost feel more like gouache in a in a sense like a really liquidy gouache but <laughs> um so it's pigment but it's it's I think there's got to be white mixed in with each of them I'm not sure because there is an opacity here that that isn't in with the uh, pit pens or the Stettler pigment pens so I'm sure I'll find a use for them but yeah those were I think these because I think Simon Says Stamp uh, sells these open stock so got those this actually is part of the big swatching project that I was working on in December and January that I'm I will do a, a whole video on but I, I know I swatch a lot um and I have swatch cards that go in right that sit in my spectrum noir marker trays with all the markers that I have I also have those little cards that are usually in the cases for all my pencils but I did want swatches that went right to the edge so I've been making these swatch strips and I've cut them so that the color goes right to the edge so I can lay this right up against something to see if it matches so and then I put them on binder rings so this is my pigment pens uh swatch strips here so I've got Faber-Castell the Stettler and now the Karen in here so a few of the Karens in the back so I'll, I'll do a whole video on that but yeah those are some Karen deco brush uh, pigment pens that I got and I know I think partly I had I mean I had to take a break from my back and I walked around and did some stretching but I think I also had to process some of the I don't know guilt <laughs> that I was feeling I don't know what happened I I you know I made those videos in December and I was so ready to embrace you know either a low buy or no buy just to be more mindful of my spending and then I wasn't I berate me go for it maybe if if you guys berate me in the comments I'll I'll finally I don't know wise up I think I think I'm definitely going to th I mean this this has got to be it um I owned the Karen Dash luminance pencils and I think I showed those in my um when I did the pencil collection video I owned a few Pablos just some greens that I got in open stock just to see if I like them they're okay but I think there's they're similar to other pencils that I already have that I, I think I would use more um and I had a few of the museum aquarelles open stock again greens and a few of the super color open stock uh, again greens and I really did like those Jackson's art was having a sale so what I did was I put together a combined set of all of the museum aquarelles so I got these open stock and the sale they were having the pencils open stock were quite a bit less than buying them in sets which was odd usually sets are a better way to go but it actually worked out really well for me because I had open stock already so I purchased the rest of the museum aquarelles but I didn't purchase all of the super colors because there were some of the same color between the the two sets um I can't remember exactly you know obviously there was a white in the museum aquarelle so I didn't bother purchasing a white and super color um there's a black the museum aquarelle didn't bother purchasing a black didn't didn't purchase the metallics from the super color um 
And then there were some other colors that were just duplicates. I think Scarlet maybe was one of them. There was a Scarlet in the Museum Ock Royal and a Scarlet in the Supercolor. Like, they could be wrong on that, but that kind of idea. If that was the case, I only bought the Museum Ock Royal version. So in this case, which is massive, it's one of these, I don't know if you can see that. So it's got the leaves, right? So it's got six leaves in here. What I did was I bought these open stock and yeah, I, I put together a set of basically Cairn Dash water soluble pencils. It's like a combined set of the museum aquarelles and the super colors. And that's, that's what I purchased. And then I put them all in this color order. This is, this is my color order. They're intermixed, interspersed. I don't know if anyone else would agree with the color order, but that's what I did. And then I had my luminance pencils um, and the few museum aquarelles and super color that I already had and Pablo's in a different case. And I just bought this one great big case and then put my luminance colors in here as well. So there's the luminance pencils. I think I only had maybe six or seven Pablo's and this case has uh, an outside zipper. So I think if I remember correctly. Are these Pablo's? Yeah. So I just stuck the few Pablo's I had just in the outside pocket here. There's still actually some little bit of padding on the outside and I don't tend to travel with my pencils so I'm not worried about them getting damaged being on the outside here. But this, that's a lot of stuff I bought in end of December, January, beginning of February. Yeah, that is it. That is it, Connie. I need to use the stuff I have. Did I need these? No. I mean, I already have the um, I have the ink tents, which are different, and I have the Albrecht Jurors. I also have the Lyra. So did I need these? No, I did. And the Karat, Stellar Karat. You're ridiculous. I I have to say though, I think of any watercolor pencil I've ever tried, the Museum Aquarelle Dissolve the best, which I mean, it's, you know, shouldn't be surprising considering the they're probably the the highest quality. They're certainly the priciest, but. Yeah. I'm really hoping to use these wet and dry. I'm hoping to maybe start doing some backgrounds with these. Uh, a lot of my pictures, I don't do backgrounds and I need to maybe start. Well, I mean, I've started doing and I've started doing backgrounds and mandalas as well, but I you know, need to, to do more of that. So I don't know, guys, was this video helpful or do you just shake your head at me and hopefully, hopefully, please don't unsubscribe to my channel. <laughs> it, was there anything of use that you saw in this video? Um, you know, any supplies that you maybe hadn't seen before that, that again, mindful, mindful, right? I need to remind myself, is there anything, you know, you think would add value to your, to your collection of, of supplies? Were there some things that I bought that add value there that will add value to my collection? I think so. Um, were there some things I bought that I simply did not need? Yes. Did I buy a lot of extras that I really did not? Oh, hang on one sec. Sorry, Mr. Color and Camus had a question there. Um, did I buy things I didn't need? Absolutely. Um, did I buy a lot of backups that I probably didn't need? Yeah, probably. Uh, but there, I mean, there were backups of things that I use. I don't know. I don't know if that's justification. Well, it is justification, but I'm hoping, <laughs> I don't know what I'm hoping, hoping you guys maybe, like I say, found some new things in this video that you didn't know existed before that, that will add value to your collections. Um, if there's anything in here that you want more information on that you'd like a link for, you want to take a, a deeper, closer look at, definitely let me know in the comments and we can do that. I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring. Until next time, which will not be a haul video, <laughs> take care. Bye-bye.